it going, guys? This is Brandon from USF1. Sorry for the uh, lack of uploads. Uh, if you watched my last video on Haas, uh, I explained that I've been having sort of power problems in this remodel that we're doing here, and it's been really inconsistent, and it's really rather annoying because I like to upload on a frequent basis. I apologize, guys. I am going to try harder, uh, try to make sure that I have power. Cool, so bear with me, and uh, yeah. Let's talk about the Chinese Grand Prix. First, what an amazing race. It was definitely all that, uh, you know, after Australia with only five overtakes, everyone was sort of hoping that, you know, China would be the real test for these cars. And it definitely turned out to be true. There was, I don't know how many overtakes you are, but every time I looked at the TV, there was someone overtaking someone. There was some sort of pace. There was some sort of action going on throughout the entire race. The, uh, the Chinese weather uh had something to do with it especially since uh you know it rained before so they all had to start on intermediates all except for uh carlos Sainz. uh i'll talk a little more about that later but um yeah everyone had to start on intermediates and then they had to switch to either the soft or super soft and it was dry throughout uh well on the rest of the race was on dry tires but it was still wet in uh in some places throughout the track so you still had like spin outs for instance, Gio Venezzi, like, like so, so you saw still people having traction issues. Let's talk about the results in general. First, let's talk about the, the retirements. Lance Stroll, uh, leave a comment below. Do you guys think it was Lance Stroll's fault or Sergio Perez's fault uh, for Stroll's retirement on lap one? Um, I personally think that it was Stroll's fault. Uh, I know everyone's been saying that Sergio Perez hit him, um, but if you guys look at the replay, you'll see that Stroll actually turned in on Perez because, you know, the turn before, Stroll went wide uh, and he actually even sort of weaved because he last sort of, like, he jerked his steering wheel. And he, so Perez put his car into the gap because, you know, he is a racing driver after all. Uh, he was going to go for the overtake. Uh, but Stroll just sort of turned in on him and ran over his front wheel and, you know, and out goes Stroll. But if he would have gave Sergio the space, and kept his wide line, which he was already on. Uh, they would have been at least they would have been wheel to wheel at the end of the at the exit of that corner. And I'm pretty sure it was like they had a right hander coming after a small straight. Stroll would have had the inside line and still could have fended off Sergio Perez uh, in that overtake opportunity. So overall, that is my explanation why it was Stroll's fault. I know that uh, I'm just one person. Um, people are gonna disagree with me. It's all right, guys. Leave a comment below. Let me know. But yeah, another disappointing day for Gio Venezzi, uh, even though he had, well, because he had, you know, a wipeout at turn 16 in qualifying uh, after he just qualified in the Q2. Um, and the same as that corner, he had the same problem. Yeah, uh, and then, of, of course, Alonzo and Van Dorn for McLaren both did not finish. Uh, very And they're very disappointing day for them again. Uh, they've had a very rough year. I'm sure both of them are looking forward to upgrades to the engine uh which word just got out that honda is gonna have a new spec for the bahrain grand prix hopefully it's more reliable and more efficient and more pacey than their current engine that they have now and the final up uh, finalize the retirements uh daniel kvyat of toro rosso uh unfortunately had to retire i'm sure he was distraught especially since he's looking for a contract extension um, with Toro Rosso or any team, I'm sure he'll be happy with any team uh, going into next season. But yeah, guys, uh, enough about the retirements. Let's talk about the bottom five of the of the order before I talk about the top ten. But from bottom up, Erickson coming in P15. Uh, he's definitely uh, well due to all the retirements. I'm sure is the reason why he ended up ranking higher, um, getting as high as he did. I don't know if he would have came P15 without some retirements going on. I would have think he would have either came 20th between like P18 and P20, depending on how he would compare to Gio Venezzi and the McLarens. Uh, overall, I think the McLarens was actually, even though they're having you know engine problems and Honda, that Honda engine is just not very good, uh, they would actually not fare all too bad against them. So it would actually be interesting to see what their true pace is compared to each other. Uh, Felipe Massa. Had a very disappointing day. Very disappointing day for Williams in general. Uh, he just couldn't, uh, you know, get that car on pace. Uh, I think overall the weather and the strategy just wasn't in in the cards for uh, for the Williams team. 
uh, especially Felipe Massa since Stroll was out on lap one. So Massa was hoping for at least another points finish like he did in Australia. Uh, that just wasn't in the cards. And, uh, yeah, very disappointing day in general for the Williams team. Uh, Palmer, you know, he just sort of like was nowhere the entire uh, in qualifying and in the race. Uh, he had a definitely, well, you can definitely tell that he had a better Australian, uh, he had a better Chinese Grand Prix than he did in Australia because he obviously finished the race this time and he didn't get into an accident in the final corner uh, in both qualifying and in race. So I guess good for good for Palmer and Renault for not crashing, but still you're out of the point. So I'm sure that was, he was disappointed. Uh, Hulkenberg ended up, I think he ended up getting like what, a 10 second penalty, time penalty uh, for Renault uh, in his second start for that team. He would have, I think he what, like, like wasn't he actually in the points until the penalty took place? So I'm sure Hulkenberg is just very pissed off that he got a, uh, a penalty for, because he overtook Marcus Erickson under a yellow flag, uh, you know, because he sort of ran wide. Well, Erickson ran wide. And, you know, he said, I guess he, I guess they went out of yellow flag and I guess Hulkenberg didn't see it, uh, which is, you know, understandable. It was pretty wet on the, you know, like the, the start finish straight and the end of turn 16. So unfortunate for Hulkenberg, he is one of my favorite drivers, uh, but, you know, just outside the points and yeah, very disappointing day for him too, even though he had a pretty fast car. Uh, and then Roman Grosjean for my Haas team. I'm sure Roman Grosjean would have wanted a points finish just like his teammate Kevin Madison, uh, especially after uh, his very disappointing day in Australia, having his engine blow out in what, lap six or so during the Australian Grand Prix. So, and having engine problems in Australia as well. Uh, I think it was like engine leaks or so, but overall, at least he got P11. He's happy then, uh, you know, he's happy to at least finish the race and hope for a better, like we can only build up from now and hopefully Roman Grosjean and the Haas team can have a double points finish in Bahrain. But yeah guys, that does it for my bottom, uh, my bottom five of the order of the top 15. Now we're going to go for the top 10, uh, one by one. So yeah, Lewis Hamilton, congratulations to Lewis Hamilton for getting his first win of the 2017 season. Uh, didn't look in doubt at all. Um, you know, we all, they all started on at least the top guys started on intermediates and Hamilton was in the lead and he didn't have to pit early this time so he stayed in the lead the entire race and you know he ended up winning with like a 6.2 second gap over Sebastian Vettel who came P2 so they actually were pretty damn close to each other um, compared to the rest of the field but yeah guys uh, Mercedes double double points finish again I'm sure they wanted a 1-2 but Hamilton getting his first win, I'm sure he was very happy with that. And Mercedes was very satisfied with that result. Um, Sebastian Vettel, I'm sure he was quite disappointed that he didn't get a race win. But he was hoping for another early Mercedes pit stop. Uh, that just never happened. Especially since, uh, you know, that was the only reason why he won that race in Australia, in my opinion. But um, Vettel, what do you guys think? Should he have gotten a penalty for his... Uh, weird grid position when he parked up on the start. Uh, he was sort of cockeyed. He was his left rear, uh, his left side of his car was sort of outside the lines. I, I like I personally don't really care, but I'm sure a lot of people would want to see him get a penalty for that. But regardless, it didn't even it didn't even give him much of an advantage. He did get passed up really quick uh, in the med in the very beginning. Uh, he even got held up by Kimi Raikkonen. Uh, later in the race and you know he ended up getting past him but maybe ultimately that was the reason why Vettel didn't get didn't put the heat on Hamilton because he could have possibly gotten past him or gotten to him and possibly seen a one-two battle but uh unfortunate for Ferrari that you know Raikkonen sort of hindered him slightly but uh it was a very interesting race on both those guys Sebastian Vettel P2 I'm sure he's hoping for P1 in Bahrain. Max Verstappen, I think he had a grand total of what, 13 overtakes uh, in the Chinese Grand Prix, uh, having started what, P18 or P16, I may be wrong, uh, I know this is way later, so um, my mind's a little, my memory's a little hazy, but I know that he was way down there, and he overtook everyone, uh, at least, like, you can even see memes of the star 
in Mario Kart and just sort of passing everyone. I think he had like four overtakes on one corner. I think it was turn four. Uh, he basically just took like a Formula One 2016 video game line and just passed around everyone. It almost seemed like everyone was like on amateur difficulty and he was racing at full pace. Uh, I'm sure he was rather satisfied with a P3 finish. Uh, one ahead of his teammate Daniel Ricciardo, which he also passed. Uh, I'm sure uh, Ricciardo wasn't very happy with that. Yeah, with, with Ricciardo coming P4, it was definitely, uh, I'm sure they were hoping for a double podium. But I'm sure that was just outside the cards because both of them were like 45 and 46 seconds behind Hamilton. So uh, there was a massive gap between those two guys and the rest uh, of the field. So it was it was definitely a, a good show of how behind Red Bull really are behind the uh, Mercedes and Ferrari's team. I'm sure they're going to need to look for some more improvement to the engine to hope for a double podium finish in some some race in the future. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen, uh, you know, he was complaining the uh, basically near the end of his stints um, every time for lack of front end grip and lack of torque, he was saying, at least in uh, first or second gear. He must have had some sort of problem with the car because he actually held up uh, Sebastian Vettel um, on, for a couple laps, which possibly hindered Vettel from at least contending for a race win. Uh, but which Raikkonen would rather, like, every time he turned in, he seemed to be complaining that it just wasn't turning in the way he wants to. So maybe Ferrari needs to do a little bit uh, on the uh, on Raikkonen's car to make him more competitive, to make it a car to where he's happy to be under it. Valtteri Bottas, what to say? He was actually having a pretty decent race until the uh, the safety car came out. And then, you know, while warming up his, his tires, he just sort of just ran off. Um, you know, spun off and, you know, took himself basically right out of the race. He was playing catch up the entire time. Uh, I think, what, like, what did you come back? Like P15 or so. And he overtook everyone to come in P6, which is, you know, pretty respectable. But I'm sure Mercedes was not happy. He had to explain himself um, why that happened. But overall, the most embarrassing part for Botas actually was not the spin off. It was his own calling him Nico over the radio. Uh, which I'm sure he was like he didn't say anything, but I would have been personally very pissed off to you call me Nico, especially when my name is Volteri. Not at fault of anyone, but they they should really know what they're talking about before they radio in to one of their drivers. But they're very disappointing day for Botas. Carlos Sainz coming in uh, P7. He was a full one minute, twelve seconds off the pace uh, from the top from the top guys. Uh, he was the only one to start the race on. Super softs and why everyone else was on intermediates. His explanation was that if uh, he just doesn't want to deal with the degradation of the intermediate tires in dry weather conditions, so he said he would just rather deal with the wet conditions with dry tires over wet tires. Uh, the strategy almost seemed to backfire on him since he had like the most horrible start ever. Uh, he just got overtaken by everyone. If you looked at everyone's onboard onboard videos, they were just all passing him left and right. But overall, he had a uh, a pretty big advantage over like what lap after lap four or five when the tracks that are drying up even more since it didn't rain anymore, and uh, you know he just sort of had a he had more pace than anyone else while they were still on their intermediates on a drying track. So uh, I think overall the strategy paid off for him, and you know very very good drive for Carlos Sainz. Disappointing day for Toro. So in general though, with a Kvyat retirement, but Great drive for Carlos Sainz. Kevin Madison bringing Haas to the points for the first time this year and the first time for him with his new team coming P8 with four points on four Haas for the Constructors' Championship. Haas is very happy, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure Roman Grosjean was disappointed that he didn't get to beat his new teammate. But it's definitely good things to come with Kevin Madison coming P8. Uh, Sergio Perez. Like I said, guys, leave a comment below. Who do you think was at fault for that driver incident between Perez and Stroll on lap one? But he coming, him coming P9 and Ocon coming P10. Um, very promising for Force India. I'm sure they were rather disappointed that they didn't beat a Haas or a Toro Rosso car. But, uh, you know, it's very, it's very promising for those guys to, um, you know, at least be coming in the last two spots and getting points for the team. It was a double points finish overall. I think... They, they get they get three points for Constructors' Championship. And I'm sure Force India would rather have a better finish coming above both the Toro Rosso and the Haas guys. But I'm sure they'll take 
any results that they can get. Very impressive drive for, for Esteban Ocon again coming P10. You know, getting P10 in Australia and in China makes it rather consistent for him. I'm sure he's looking to improve. Uh, he has a lot of tr he has a lot of talent with force in, with in that car, and he can only get better from now on. So we will be hoping we'll keep an eye out for Esteban Ocon in the future. He has some potential for some greatness there. But we but uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I know this is rather long, uh, so and very 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 late. But yeah. Uh, again, guys, I apologize for that, but I will be coming with a Bahrain preview probably tomorrow. Uh, after this edit or so but, but yeah guys thanks for watching i'm uh leave a like for this video drop a comment below or well, one not just for whose fault it is but drop a comment below for anything that you guys want to ask me maybe some cool video ideas i was thinking about doing uh i did get blocked from fom recently on a couple things i was trying to do so i'm trying to avoid getting blocked again uh, at least a video taken down again so uh but yeah guys thanks for watching um please subscribe if you're new, I, I am going to be posting, I post a lot of Formula 1 related videos. Well, not lately, but on a rather consistent basis, um, barring, you know, power problems or anything like that. But yeah, guys, I'm Brandon with USF1. Thanks for watching. Peace.